things as you go along. Okay, I'm so excited to interview Kelly Cummings. She has joined the, she, she is one of my dear friends and she's a Caritas coach and she has been trained with Watson Caring Science Institute and also she's an end of life conscious living, conscious dying doula. So she has been involved with Jean's work for many years and also she works at the VA system and she is in a leadership position in the VA and she's done some incredible work in this VA system of integrating caring into the hospital and creating her own program, integrating with whole health. So she is really an innovator who has created a new model of practice, a professional practice that she's activating and doing right now, which is really exciting. And her past has been, she was in the US Army Nurse Corps and she's worked during her military career. She worked in Walter Reed Army Medical Center as a pediatric nurse. She has been in many leadership positions and wherever she's been, I am sure she has been a major change maker, major innovator because she's visionary and she really can see beyond to where we're going. And she's a wonderful initiator. So that's incredible. She was born and raised in Massachusetts. Now she lives in North Carolina. And I'm very excited to know she got her Bachelor of Science in Boston College, and I got my Master's of Science in Nursing <laughs> in Boston College. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> or maybe you mentioned it. Yeah. So right now, and I also see that you got your PhD in the Netherlands. Yeah. That is wonderful and exciting. So she is a very incredible person. She is in nursing and she has a full life. And one of the things I really love about her, she is someone who loves rock climbing, yoga, cycling, and she's unbelievably physical fit because that's what we're going to need in the future for sure is us being strong. Yeah. So she's a leader in that and a mentor for me in that. So that's a little bit about you. That's a little bit about you. And I'm so excited because I really feel Kelly brings something very special to the table. Because she works in the VA system, she has the ability to reach, work with veterans and work with many of the hospitals. And since she is a visionary, there is so much that can happen in this world and the system that she's working in. So I'm so excited to share, have her share her vision of what we can do in the future. So thank you for doing this call, Kelly. Thank you for asking me, Mary. It's so exciting. <laughs> I'm, I love it that you're here. So what are some of your ideas for the future? What do you think that, what do you think some of the important things that we should do as we move forward? I, I would say right now is an interesting time to be asking that question. And uh, I've been thinking about it quite a bit. I think we really have to tap into our role as healers. Mm. Uh, one of the things that, in, that amazed me going into the VA system was how complex the, the issues are with some of the veterans. A lot of the veterans that get their care through the VA healthcare system, they're very complex. They have multiple healthcare issues, mental health issues, social issues, you name it. Um, you know, I found that practicing at the VA was probably the most complex nursing care that I've experienced. Okay. It seems like, it seems like over the years, things just get more complex. Right. But, okay, That's what Martha Rogers said. Remember Martha Rogers, a the nurse theorist, increasing complexity? Yes. So, it, you know, the VA, is, it, it's, that was the one thing that surprised me the most. And I think the 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 ways that nursing seems to be evolving in some places in in a more technological or technical way is not what people need mm -hmm. people need nurses who understand how um people are part of a a community how people are part of a a system how people are part of um, families and and have things that matter and have things that are important to them and um, you know their health care issues are just a small part of that right. but when we're you know one of the things I used to think 
as a nurse, patients spend such a small time of their part, small part of their lives with us, if they're lucky. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, and most people are not spending more than five or six percent of a year in healthcare, which is, but we think we're so relevant um, mm -hmm. because we, we help them through illness and disease. And, and what I think we need is our, we need our, our people who are willing to um, do more than that, that help people stay healthy and, and help people find what meaning and purpose there is for them and, and give them the skills and the tools they need to get there. Right. Um, that, that to me is what I think nurses, and, and we've come so far uh, away from that. So how do we, how do we turn back the clock, so to speak, and, and look at some of our, our history and our ancestry and, and understand that this is really what the world needs. We need people who are healers, who understand that the illnesses are just such a small part of. I love that when you say, we have to remember we are healers. Will you talk about that a little bit more? Because I think that's such a powerful, futuristic, but at, in the past, like you say, when we look at our history, we look at our ancestry, you know, the power of us bringing healing to the encounter beyond just illness, like you're saying. So talk more about that, because that to me is so important. Um, so I was reading something the other day, part of the model that I'm working in has healing relations and healing environments as part of the whole model. And and I've been asking people, what does that mean? And I, I was looking for more information about it. And it's it's not there. It's just kind of this, well, conceptually, we need healing environment and healing relationships. And we right. haven't defined it. And we don't know what that is. Right. So what, is that, what does that mean to me? And in, in, in talking to you and Jean and others, um, the nurse is that healing relationship. And, and we bring to that um, you know, good, good, um, feelings, mm -hmm. good information, good energy, mm -hmm. um, empathy, compassion, all those things are things that help us be a leader. And I believe, and I know there are others that believe this, that, that a relationship can be just as healing as anything else. It can right. be just as destructive too, but it can right. be just as, healing as medicine or, um, treatment or procedure that that healing relationship with another person is incredibly beneficial. I've been um, practicing healing touch for a while and I, there's a wonderful teacher that is in this area. Her name is Deborah Laramore and Deborah has a way of helping us remember our role as healers okay. just, just by being in the same space as someone else. So I think that's where we, we don't, I, I learned some of that in nursing school, but I've also learned that from wisdom of being with other people and, you know, people like you and, and Jean right. and Terry. And I'm so glad you brought that up because when I was a young nurse, I studied therapeutic touch and, you know, there was this whole movement of the power of just touching another human being and how we do that. So we were teaching nurses those skills. And then Janet Quinn followed up with that whole process of teaching healing touch. And now we're kind of returning to it. And there are all kind of programs on healing touch, but I really, now that I think about it, it should be integral into who we are as nurses, that we all activate that skill of what healing touch is and learn it. You know, when I did my dissertation a few years ago, I, I poured through documents for orientation for nurses and mm -hmm. where I was working at the time and right. looked for words like relationships and compassion. And right. it's not in any of those documents. So, or, you know, organizations contribute to that sense that the healing's not that important as well because it's not talked about and it's not defined and right. it's not described. And I think some people think that that, oh, nurses just do that. And I don't think they do. Some do, and, and you know it when you see it. But I think mm -hmm. helping people reconnect or remember that, that 
crucial aspect of what we do is, is where I would like to see the future headed. And, and the there other, are tools that we can use, but right. that, who we are is really pretty important. Sorry, my screen is moving. It's moving. It's, it's moving. It's like, it's shaking. It's shaking and it's As vibrating talking, from the energy. Yeah. It's vibrating from the energy of your body. Your healing body is vibrating. Okay. We're getting it. I love it. <laughs> so let me ask you about, tell me when you, I, I love this idea and I want to talk about it more. But I think in, in everything we can do, as we, if we think about as we evolve, as practitioners of the future, what I'm hearing you saying that are remembering that we're actual healers and not only integrating the consciousness of caring, but this, the skills, mm -hmm. telling you their skills and tools that you can use. Right. Tell me more about that. And with that I think we re remember when we were learning skills in nursing school. We used our hands. Right. We did a physical assessment involving our hands, touching, percussing, auscultating. You know, all of those things were, were very important when we learned things. And, and I don't think hands and touch and, and that connection is as, is as relevant I think it's relevant. That's not true. Is yeah. as not as it as it focused on as it was when we were in school. We didn't wear gloves for everything, mm -hmm. and and there's something to be said about how connection through touch is, is healing. So that's one of the things that one of the tools that we have are just our hands. Oh. I remember doing bed back rubs and and those kinds of things when people would on the evening shift so people would sleep well those things are still helpful and and we just don't we don't emphasize it so the the emphasis on regulations and numbers and data has has kind of d just detoured that from what we do i think so that he touches one tool um um you know i also learned uh, process recordings when I was in nursing school and understanding what I'm thinking and being present and mindful. And right. those things are real. That's a tool. Mindfulness is a tool as well. Mindfulness with uh, our, our patients or clients or whatever and mindfulness with each other. And exactly. You know, those are just two that come to mind. Those are two very powerful skills, mindfulness in practice, touching in practice, those are very powerful. And I also, how do you integrate it into the VA system? Are, are the nurses supported and reminded? Because I do remember when I worked at the Beth Central Hospital in Boston, I worked on the evening shift every night, you know, when it was bedtime, I went down the hallways and that's how I said goodbye to, you know, good night to all my patients, gave them, checked their vital signs, made sure they were okay. Mm -hmm. I actually spent time in the room putting the lotion on their back. You know, sometimes I would even give, you know, I would bathe their feet before they put their feet in bed. It was just a way of being with the patient and giving the patient care and love and sort of touching them and, and spending time with them and assessing them. and teaching and all the things that we do, but we don't have those almost like rituals or something, those beautiful physical right. things that we do with patients that are just so important, you know, where we go in and we have a purpose and a really powerful healing relationship, like you said. Right. right. And I, I think rituals are one of those things that, that need to be brought back. In, and um, I struggled, like it was again, part of my dissertation, trying to figure out what rituals do we still have that um, we had 20 or even 30 years ago. Um, so, so how do we do it at the VA? I think the VA is where I am. Some of the things that we've tried to do is make healing touch accessible for folks. So we've offered right. classes for nurses to take healing touch. We talk about um, self-care a lot. We, right. you know, the, the caring circle that I developed in the curriculum was kind of a, a grassroots approach to caring science where, 
you know, we had mentors for people that were interested in it. And then they were the, the, the voice and the hands and the, the presence for their colleagues. So that's, that's how I think it happens is you, you gather together people that you see that in, and then you put them to work. <laughs> that's amazing. Cause I would love for you to talk about what you did at the, at the VA system. What you did was really remarkable. You became a Caritas coach and then you went in and created a program that was in house that was in house and you identified nurses that were already exhibiting what caring is. Right. And it, what I understand is like you illuminated them, you got them together, created a circle, created your own mini kind of study group or program mm -hmm. in right. which they graduated from. And then they go back and then they become teachers and then you keep it rolling and keep it going. Right. Right. I think that to me, those kind of nurse initiated programs that really we identify who are I'm just making this up who are the illuminaries in their systems who are the people that are you know illuminated and have the energy and then we take them we come together and we create we create a collective a coalition right yes. coalition of yes. these people and then with that coalition collectively we can change the system right and, and i think you know i was in a position of leadership so it was easy for me to do that mm -hmm. but it hadn't been done before and i didn't do it with leaders i identified people that were um just that i had come across that i thought oh you're like me <laughs> Yeah. And you love nursing the way I love nursing. So that was kind of it. I was like, I just identified people that I thought and then invited them. And if they said no and or they stopped coming, then I knew they weren't the right people. <laughs> but the ones that kept coming were the ones that I thought, yeah, this is how this works. And then, you know, it's like that, that old, um, was it Herbal Essence commercial? They told two friends and hopefully they'll tell two friends and then- right. And that's how you change. And, and for me, the things that have been most meaningful for me are the things that are um, experiential mm -hmm. and things that, that are, you know, have a spiritual component to it and wow. have some educational component to it. But also those are the things that you'll remember and those lead to transformation. Just having a class and you know, when I first started talking to folks at, uh, at Salisbury about um, Jean's work and caring science, they wanted to put up the 10 Caritas processes. And, and, I, and I thought, well, what, you can't, no. <laughs> no, we're signed, there are signs up everywhere and they don't make any difference. So that's not right. the direction we're going to go. Well, we just have right. to tell people about it. Well, telling people about it is a, is, is a start. But then, then what? Do you you've got to inform yourself and you've got to start the process with, you know, the self development and the self acceptance and the self acknowledgement and the self work that you have to do. And that requires being part of a group that we you yes. can actually do that with, that you have, you know, one of the things I hear you saying is um, we can read these things, but we have to have an experience of personal, of personally, personally transforming into the practice right. and that requires deep awareness that requires process that requires time that requires reflection that requires us doing the inner work that's inside of ourselves that blocks us from making these transformational changes to be to evolve into what we can be in the future and i, I think, think that can be fabulous go ahead I don't think that can be an individual initiative. Right. I think that is, like you said, it's a collective, it's a collaborative. Transformation rarely occurs in isolation. <laughs> I suppose it does. Maybe those mothers and desert mothers and fathers that went out, maybe they had a personal transformation on their own. But I think it's, it's much more, it's much easier when you're in community. Yes. And I think the part that that was 
um, nice too about the work that we did was that, so you had the transformation, but then you had to put that to work. You couldn't just say, ah, I'm transformed and I'm not going to share that with anyone. Right. I'm transformed and now I have to, I have to share this and do something different and be somebody different. So kind of, um, you know, see how that will be sustained. But I think that's the, you know, learning and transformation are two totally different things and transformation by itself without community and then follow up in your right. community. Well, what's incredible that I saw when I was at the VA system is that there was a group of people, of nurses, that stepped forward with this intention to learn, but to transform, to engage, and support each other in the projects that they did. And what was really beautiful is each person um, identified something they wanted to do. They had the support and resources of each other. You know, one of the things that's so powerful in making transformation happen, a system that you don't do it alone, that you have a community of people that are actually supporting each other. In a way, what Jean talks about, it creates a, for me, a field of, of collective consciousness. Mm -hmm. And a field of collective consciousness is so real. It's <laughs> powerful. It you know, is. what happens, I remember when I started a program in a local hospital here in Gainesville, where we were bringing arts in the hospital and we created this collective consciousness, then all of a sudden it was almost like a popcorn pop over there, pop over there. They, were, they weren't inside, but I, I felt like there was like little tiny shooting stars and we were all becoming connected, even though we might not have known each other. Right. But because we started doing the same thing, suddenly we found each other. And yeah. that is an amazing thing that I could feel that at when I went into the VA. I could feel that there was this connection. More than the people in the room, it was spreading itself out energetically. And, and I think when I went through the Caritas Coach Program, coming back to my organization and doing a project, it's like, I'm the only one how do I do this when I'm the only, I can't do this by myself. So I, you, you had to find those folks and you had to um, start finding other like-minded people and then growing them and, and, and helping them develop in that, that way as well. So I, I knew I wanted to do it and I knew it had to involve other people and it just kind of evolved from there. The other thing I want to acknowledge about you and appreciate about you, one of the things when I'm in your presence, which is really powerful, and I think when you're a visionary and you're a conscious and you're awake and you see the possibilities, that as a leader, there, I feel when I'm with you, there's a very expansive energy. It's open-minded. It's a curious there's a curiosity of what's going on in the system and who are the other people that you can be in partnership with. And you found them and they found you. And I think that's one of the characteristics that we need to evolve in our leaders of the future is this openness of possibility. How can we activate the potential, which has not been our mindset right. in nursing. No. And we need to open, I, to me, I'm just talking, we need to open our mindset to explore all the different ways of being and possibilities in the system. And the VA system is a very challenging system. You were saying how complex yeah, it was, right. but you did. I could feel the transformation in that system. Yeah, it is, um, it is very challenging, but you know that there are like-minded people everywhere you go. You just have to find them and then help realize that energy in a, in a positive way. And it's not, um, there, it's not difficult to do mm -hmm. with compassion and love. Those things aren't hard to do. You just have to give people permission to express that at work. <laughs> You know, the VA system is a major system in the United States. I really, I, this is my, my, secret dream is if you could, and I would love to help you with this, 
create this model for v, in this VA, um, duplicate this model in other VAs, make it happen more on a national level, networking and creating a coalition of nurse leaders in the VA system, it could be a way we could step into the future. And I think the one thing when I reached out to the other, Jean gave me a list of the other nurses at the VA. When I reached out to them, everyone was excited. And I think they're all, they're all looking for what do we do now? Because we've been through the training. We are all Caritas coaches. We all love caring science and embrace it. But now what do we do with that? And how do we use that within our system in, um, people get stuck mm -hmm. in the system because it seems so um, rigid. It's not just the VA, it's any healthcare system. It seems so rigid and it seems so oppositional to caring and <laughs> compassion. That, uh, but it, it is possible. One of the things that, I, I, that has impacted me a lot is Jean saying that you are a healing, you create a healing environment. It doesn't matter where you are, what your structure looks like, but you create a healing environment and everyone has the possibility to do that. And yeah. I think we, we forget that. We are often feeling very powerless and, oh, I can't do that, but you can show up however you want to show up in, in, in a healing relationship. You can show up in a healing, healthy, hap, um, helpful way, or you can show up angry and bitter and every, people know it either way. They know it either way. So returning to, I really want to return to the things that I felt have been really important about you said, is nurses remembering they are healers. I think that is really important. I think the power of healing touch is super incredible to reclaim our tool of healing being touch. Our touch is in fact healing just yeah. by touching our patients. Also mindfulness practice of expanding our consciousness and really connecting more mindfully in the work that we do, I think is one of the other points you made that was really important. And the healing relationship. And I love this idea when you're talking that we are the healing environment. You know, Dr. Watson talks about, Gene talks about, we are the healing environment. Just by being who we are, we right. bring healing into the room. And I also want to appreciate you because you're, you know, when you said you come back and you're a Caritas coach, what do we do? Well, you've done it. You actually went back into a system and you realize you can't do it alone. You created a program called Caritas Circles. You expanded the circle of the field of people understanding what it means to be Caritas. Every one of the people I met when I was at your system, I could feel their deep understanding and connection to it. Because it's, to me, it's about being connected to the fact that we are caring energy. Right. And yeah. everyone I met had such caring energy that was illuminated. And to me, that's kind of the future that everyone yeah. opens up to the potential of them being pure, caring energy. Not perfect people, but right. just aware of that skill that ability that we have. And I think that I, I totally agree with how everything you just said. And I think we do that by being more mindful and being aware and being in the present moment. And it's, yeah. Well, I just want to say how much I love, I love you. I'm so happy. Yeah. And I want to also tell everyone who's listening that what's one of the most important things about this telesummit is that we see each other. We recognize we are, we are a community that has tremendous resources. There are leaders, there are visions, there are nurses that we are all connected and that we have just this little telesummit is just creating a coalition of energy and everyone who's listening 
touching you and you're touching everyone, you're touching us and that we all have each other. So yes. thank you so much, Kelly. Thank you so much for asking thank me, Mary. You. I love you. Thank you. I've really had a great meeting. This was great. Thank you. Bye-bye.